Hello everybody, this is Spoden. Today we're going to be playing some SAS4, and this is actually going to be my first ever video with commentary in it. Basically, this is going to be the start of a new series that I'm going to be making, where I will be building a character from the ground up and becoming a powerful endgame player. Uh, you can choose any of the three classes, they're all viable in the end game, but the most powerful one is going to be the assault, which is why I'm going to be picking it. Name doesn't matter, you can name him anything. And it's fine. You'll be starting with some pretty bad weapons, but that's fine. You'll get better later. Uh I would usually recommend playing a quick match instead of single player to start off because if you play single player there's actually a rare chance that you won't actually level up from the first mission which is not good that's actually really bad but but yeah and by playing multiplayer you're gonna guaranteed level up get some stronger enemies and you might even get more loot than usual by then playing in single player. And by loot I mean strong boxes. Because more enemies means more chances for drops. I'm probably not going to be showing everything that happens as I play, because Oh, let me let me turn that off. A a majority of the stuff that happens in this game is very very boring but it, it can get pretty exciting at times like uh and it can actually get pretty intense later on but at this stage it's gonna be extremely boring and pretty slow i would say the reason why this game isn't bigger is probably because of this stage of the game the very beginning stage it's very it's pretty poorly executed it's not that good but it is what it is. Um, I'm just going to show the entirety of this very first mission. And I'm probably going to end up making a lot of jump cuts. And start recording again when something interesting happens or I find something interesting. But before that, I want to talk about this map that we're playing on here real quick. This is the first map that you will ever play in SAS4. It's called Onslaught. Basically, the objective is just to survive, nothing else. Like, you can let them break these doors, it doesn't actually matter. You weren't really defending anything besides yourself. And neither neither are they, apparently. You might You might die from that. Nah, he got it. Um, but yeah, there's actually uh, one secret to be found on this map, and then there's three item spawn locations. Uh, item spawn locations are areas where items will spawn at a specific time frame as you're playing the map, or after you've reached a certain criteria, cri criteria while playing. Uh, first item is going to be right here in this corner. Second one will be in this corner as well, right down here. And the third item will be inside of this room. The doors will open at around uh, the 30 second mark, I believe. And the item will be right here. There will also be a med kit down here that you can use to heal yourself. There's also a few explosive canisters. They're they're not that good. I usually just ignore them. I actually blow them up a lot on accident without paying attention. Luckily, they can't actually do any self-damage, so you can blow them up without having to worry about anything. And the secret is actually here. It's this right here. You can actually shoot this and break it down. I'm going to throw some grenades to try to speed that up. And as you can see, I got a titanium strongbox. That is the 
only way in the game. Okay, I take it back. There's actually a new way that was released relatively newish, or recently, that allows you to get items and gear in a different way than boxes, but this right here, strong boxes are the main way you're going to acquire gear in this game, especially in the early game. So you want to acquire as many strong boxes as you can to get really good loot and become beefy. And just deal more damage overall and be more survivable in the late game. Uh, they can they can be pretty rare or you can get a lot of them in just a single game. But usually a majority of the items that you get out of them are going to be bad. Which is unfortunate, so... I'm probably going to be making guides on how to get high level gear either guaranteed or in a more efficient manner. There's there's a few ways to farm different types of gear in this game and I'll be going over all of it in either this this series here or in separate video guides. I'm not entirely sure yet. I'll I'll just figure it out as I do it. Um, also, the Assault class has an ability, which you can see down here in the bottom left. It's on cooldown right now, but it is the Assault class's first ability and one of its active abilities, which means you can activate it on command. It's not constantly going. There's active abilities and passive abilities. Uh, passive abilities are just always going, or they can be activated through certain actions like for example killing spree is one of the assault's passive abilities which triggers after you get 20 consecutive rapid zombie kills and it increases your damage and pierce on your weapons for a short time your damage is self-explanatory it's how much damage you deal and the pierce is the amount of targets you can affect per shot so for example this weapon has only one pierce so if I shoot this enemy the bullet will become trapped inside of the enemy and disappear however if I have a pierce of two the bullet will pierce through the enemy and hit anything behind it but when it hits a second enemy it, the bullet will disappear again so for every pierce you have, every pierce value you have, you can affect more enemies per shot. So pierce of three, you can hit three enemies, pierce of four, you can hit four, and so on. Um, and also, his first ability, his active ability, Adrenaline. What Adrenaline does is, for a short time, it increases his movement speed, reload speed, and firing speed. All three at the same time. Which is a very powerful ability, which is actually uh, one of the two things that makes him the strongest character in the game. The second thing being his passive passive ability, Killing Spree. Alright, so I just gotta level up. Every time you level up, you're gonna gain 100 hit points. You're gonna gain one free strong box, and also you're going to gain a skill point, which you can use to make your character stronger without actually getting any weapons or armor. Alright, so right here, right off the bat, we got a really good starting weapon. HBM-004. Very good starting weapon. Always keep that. Uh, helmet. It's bad, but I can't sell it, so I, I'm not going to. This is also bad, but I'm also going to keep that because I don't have a choice. Now, for skills, starting off, I always recommend for Assault, you go over here and you put one point into Stimshot. Uh, Stimshot is a passive ability. It triggers only when you hit low HP, and it will regenerate your hit points and get you back in a stable situation. Always only put one skill point. You never want to put any more than one in this skill, because any more than one, you're just wasting your skill points. Uh, this is going to be a pretty useful ability no matter what level you are, because 
you're probably going to end up taking damage a lot. It, it's hard to avoid, so you always want to have a way to regenerate your health, and this is a really good way to do it. In case you ever get into a sticky situation. This is Adrenaline. Uh, you, in the build that I'm going to be making, uh, I'm just going to be doing a pretty much raw damage build using Stripper, Shock Field, and maybe Krakatoa eventually. That's a uh, laser weapon that you can get from Faction Wars. Uh, I'll be getting into Faction Wars some other time, but... Uh, I'm going to be bringing Adrenaline up to 25, Killing Spree to 25, Stim Shot is going to stay at 1. I'm going to have 5 points in Fast Reload, 21 points in Fast Movement, and then 23 points in Body Armor Expert for my endgame build. And everything else here you can ignore. Uh, field Supply is bad, Energy Regen, it, you might want it on Medic. But probably not. You don't actually need it. Health regeneration is only good for a AFK build on heavy and nothing else. Pay grade is always bad. Never waste your points on this. Recovery time is only good for a suicide medic. Uh, suicide medic is pretty much a medic that lives to die. I, I know that, that that sounds bad, but it's an actual build. Uh, Medic has an ability called Final Farewell, which drops med kits every time he dies. So if you create a maximum recovery time build, you can just die, get back up, die, get back up over and over again, and just drop a ton of hit, uh, med kits everywhere and heal everybody. Which is actually, it's funny and useful at the same time. Uh, fast Reload. Uh, the reason why I'm going to be putting 5 points in that is because that's the minimum amount of points that you need to put in in order to achieve maximum reload speed on shotgun weapons. Uh, I actually might put 6 points in it just to ensure I can have maximum reload in every weapon. Like I can do uh, 20 fast movement and then 6 fast reload. That's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, there's the reason why I say uh, max reload is because you can't have uh, instantaneous reloads like it can't be zero second reloads in every weapon every single weapon has a 80% reload speed cap that you can't push through so eventually after you get too many points in this skill you won't be able to reload any faster than you would if you took like five points off or something uh, you'll see what I mean a little bit later on, I'll demonstrate it, but uh, for now, just put 6 points in this, it'll give you some pretty good reload. Gun Modification Expert, it reduces the cost of upgrading guns and armor. I know it just says guns, but it's also armor. Uh, it's not useful, don't get it, it's bad. Close Quarter Combat, um... If you're an achievement hunter, you can get this, but it's a it's not a good skill. It's bad. Deadly force is I mean, if you have spare skill points, you could put some points in this just for a little bit of extra damage, but it's not really that useful for anything cuz just a few percent damage increase isn't that much. It's a little bit, but not much. And then assault team which is locked behind level 20 uh never ever get assault team unless you're an achievement hunter or something never get assault team it's bad it's actually really really bad it, it, it's terrible and then critical shot you could you could go for crit if you really wanted to but it's not really the most viable build anymore it used to be but not anymore it's it's kind of obsolete at this point, unless they give it some sort of buff. But for now, on my build, I'm not going to go for it. Oh, I, I should also probably mention, every time you start a new character, uh, you have a free reset in the bottom left-hand corner if you ever mess up your character's build or something. And you can reset your points, just like that. 
So now I have all my skill points back. And you can use that for uh, whenever you mess up your build, like on accident, you can just go in and fix it, which is very nice. However, unfortunately, after the first time you reset, it costs money to reset again, which uh, I hope they fix that in a, in a future update, like they add a respec token to the Faction Wars armory store. That, that would be a really good fix for this, but as of right now, after you use your one free reset, you have to spend $3 to reset your skill points again, which I find really scummy. It's very annoying, but it is what it is. Just, uh, just make sure you don't mess up your build with any of this, or, uh, or this over here, or this. You just want this, 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 one point in this, uh, a lot of this, depending on your build, a lot of this, uh, usually you want to avoid this, but you, you can definitely get away with crit shot and then fast reload. And then here, good shotgun, very good shotgun, buy a lot of ammo for it, bam, cool. And then our armor, uh, there's no upgrades for this yet. If I could upgrade it, I would put Nimble on it for increased reload speed. And this helmet, I can't do anything with it, but uh, I'm going to have all three of these equipped because I would like to increase my mastery for my armor. Uh, you gain mastery just from completing missions, and armor mastery is very useful because you're going to gain a lot of strong bonuses to your character through wearing your armor. For example, the chest piece. The first two aren't aren't really that useful, but the third one, very useful. Plus 2,000 health is going to make you way, way stronger later on. Uh, the helmet. Uh, there's really not that much here. For Assault and Heavy, the only one that's really useful is Tier 5 tier 2 to a certain degree it's not really that good uh tier 1 though is actually man it's a must have on medic you're gonna want this one and uh, it's pretty much unavoidable that you get this one like it's really easy to get you'll probably get it at a very low level so it's pretty good uh but the other three down here gloves pants and boots these are the biggest ones right here like vest is pretty good with the 200 or 2000 health but the gloves pants and boots are the biggest armor masteries that you're going to want to look for uh gloves um there's a there's a lot here you got the, the first one isn't that useful but the bottom four it, they're all good uh lower movement penalty of the gun up to four percent um the heavier the weapon, the more it's going to reduce the penalty. And reduced weight on your weapons is... It's always good. You always want this. Always always a great thing to have. 10% uh, faster reload speed. This is a 10% flat increase to your reload speed. This is mandatory on every build. It's incredible. It increases your damage so much. Uh, and then over here plus 50% pickup radius. Uh, sometimes when you kill enemies, um, the items might get trapped behind walls in, in places that you can't reach them, which can be pretty annoying, it, like without this mastery tier. Um, but once you have this, you might be able to actually r bump up against the wall and pick it up through the wall. You might not, it might not always work that way, but it's actually helped me save quite a few items from just being lost to time behind a wall or something and then uh defense that kind of thing over here we got plus 15 percent healing from med kits plus three percent movement speed which is very 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 good more defense these top two are bad except for the heat that's nice um 
over here we got heat and toxic for the first two. Uh, toxic is all right. Um, heat is really useful. Um, you're gonna take more damage from heat and toxic than anything. I mean, uh, my bad. Uh, toxic and physical damage are the most common types in the game. So a majority of your armor is going to be built around defending against the two. A uh, few enemies though will deal heat damage to you. So in this build that I'm going to be making here, for a majority of the game, the heat damage is going to be pretty bad for us. Like, for example, if I get hit by the Wicker boss, I'm probably probably going to die in like two hits, sometimes even one hit. So heat, yeah, extra heat defense is going to be really good from any source. But uh, these two, not too useful in the end game. In the early game, they're pretty good. However, 3% uh, movement speed and 10% faster backpedal speed, very good. And uh, the way this works is a little bit confusing, but I'll, I'll simplify it. Um, for weapons, the way you gain mastery is by getting kills with specific weapon types. So for example, the weapon that I just equipped, the HVM-004 shotgun, every kill that I get with this will be one mastery point. So in order to reach the first mastery tier of five reload speed, or uh, plus five percent reload speed, I need to get 2,400 kills with shotguns. So after 2,400 kills, I will unlock this, but only if I use shotguns. If I use an assault rifle, it won't work. Anything else here won't work. Um, and then some weapon types don't have a mastery at all. For example, if I go into collections and go over here, disc, disc throwers and lasers don't have a mastery attached to them. So uh, these weapons here are good. Hotspot and Krakatoa. Shredder is, it's all right. It's not that good. Exterminator is a good low level weapon. But uh, these two over here, they're useful. You can definitely use them. It's just uh, using them won't give you any mastery towards anything besides high damage ammo mastery. If you decide to spend more money on ammo and get that extra damage, but Laser beams and disc throwers don't have a mastery yet, unfortunately. But yeah, that's how weapon mastery works. Armor mastery is a little bit different. Uh, so when you complete a match, a set amount of mastery will go towards a random piece of armor that you have equipped. So for example, right now I have gloves, vest, and a helmet equipped. At the end of a mission, I'll gain around like 300 mastery. It doesn't matter how many zombie kills you get, you're gonna you're gonna get the same amount of experience regardless. Or I think it actually does matter how many kills you get. But like even if you got like a thousand kills, it wouldn't give you plus 1,000 mastery. It would give you like plus 330 or something, something along those lines. So it matters a little bit how many kills you get, but keep in mind, it does cap at a certain point. So if you're trying to farm armor mastery, the way to do it is to just complete as many missions as you can, pretty much. However, for weapons, you can go into endless events and get as many kills as you can, and you'll just keep getting more and more mastery, which is fantastic. And uh, for armor pieces that you don't have anything equipped for, you won't get any mastery. So if you want to farm mastery for a specific piece of gear, like for example, if I wanted to get this movement speed upgrade as fast as I could, or as fast as I can, I would take off my helmet, vest, gloves, and pants, and only and only have my boots on, and I would be able to get that mastery a lot faster. But yeah, I'm going to pause the recording here, and I'll 
continue recording whenever something interesting happens, because from this point onward, it's just more of the same stuff, just different missions. Like right here, it's probably just going to be Onslaught again, more than likely. I might also get Vaccine, which is the second map, but it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, here it is, Vaccine. Uh, yeah, I'll stop the recording here. I'll keep recording again if anything interesting happens. So, uh, yeah, see ya. I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so, I'm back. This is, uh, Vaccine. This is about halfway through the mission right now. Uh, right now I'm just gonna give you a quick strategy for this mission that a lot of players don't know about. Uh, basically the way enemies spawn in this portion of the mission is they will come from the right top or bottom or all three at the same time uh, so for the first train car they're gonna come from the top left and right or actually no it's the uh, left right and bottom the second train car they're gonna come from the top and the right and for this one that I'm here that I'm in right now they're coming from all three the strategy that you want to use for better survivability is staying as far left as you can for the second and third train car. The first train car you want to stand in the middle just like this and fire, or actually stand right here and fire down left and right. But for the second and third train cars you want to stand here backed up against the door. That way the enemies have to walk further in order to get to you and you have more time to kill them before they can damage you. And uh, in the final train car we have a med kit and then stairs leading up to the surface and then a few shielders here. Not too big a deal. And then up here we're, gonna, we're about to reach our objective which is the vaccine. And the way the vaccine mission works is, if you're playing in multiplayer, only one person has to grab the vaccine. Uh, usually all four players are going to grab it, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, not all four players need to have it. The clear condition, the win condition, is one player has the vaccine and they take it to the dropship. Uh, the dropship only appears after one person has found the vaccine. Also, you open the secret room, and it f turns out the vaccine is in the lab 3, which is right here. Uh, we can ignore all the other doors now, but I am not going to, and apparently neither is that guy. Uh, I want to get as many kills as possible for more mastery and also more experience, so I'm going to open all of these doors. All of them. Because that's more experience, more mastery, and more chances for loot to drop, which is always nice. You always want loot. Uh, but now the dropship has arrived. For everyone to complete the mission, only one person has to have the vaccine, which is that green thing on the back. Only one person has to have that inside of the ship for everyone to win. So if you have one vaccine in the ship and the other three players enter the ship, you can still you still win. However, uh, one thing that m most players may not have known about this game is, uh, even veteran players probably don't know about this one, is uh, you can have one vaccine in the ship, and the rest of the players don't make it to the ship. So you have one vaccine in the ship, and everyone else is pretty much left on the planet to die as it blows up. Everyone will still win. Even though three players supposedly got left behind to die in the uh, planet's explosion, you will still win. You'll still get all the money. You won't actually die or anything. The mission will just end, and you'll keep all the loot. So if, if you're in a really bad situation and the timer's really tight, uh, one person could just ignore the boss and forfeit the loot and go straight to the ship to ensure that everyone on the team wins, which is, uh, it's not something that happens often, but it's pretty useful information to know nonetheless. Uh, another thing is, 
uh, later on, there's a boss that will appear known as Necrosis, which is the highest level boss in the game. And when you kill Necrosis, it splits it splits into three smaller versions of itself with different abilities. Um, however, when you kill Necrosis and it splits into three smaller versions, it also drops the strong box for the boss kill. The smaller three bosses actually don't drop anything. The only real reason to fight them is for experience. But you get experience from a lot of other sources anyway, so... Uh, when you ki when you do kill Necrosis on this map, you can actually just grab the box and then walk straight to the ship and win, without having to waste your time fighting the boss spawns, which is a really nice time save. And I I do it every single time. It's it's a lot of fun doing that skip. Uh, right here I think we get another level up. Yes, we do. So that's another strong box. And then plus two for the mission itself. Here we actually get good gloves. Look at that. And then we get... That's not that great, but I'll take it. Okay, yeah. Machine assisted. That's a movement speed increase. That is very good. And then another strong bucks for the daily reward. This one is actually not, not bad. It has a... Pretty sure that's smart target, which grants us additional damage. So we can go ahead and equip all of those. All of those. Now all we need are pants. We can sell all the rest of the stuff. I'm, I'm just going to keep the vest as a trophy. But yeah, here we have yeah smart target, which increases weapons damage. Uh, it increases the damage based off of the weapon's base damage. So what I mean by that is if I go over here uh, this shotgun the base damage was originally I believe uh, 70 I think yeah 70 so the base damage is 70, so when I throw on the helmet, it's going to have a 2% increase to the damage. However, uh, later on you'll get weapons that also can be upgraded. And one of those upgrades I can throw on the weapons are Deadly, which increases the weapon's max damage here. Uh, smart Target does not scale with that increasing damage. So when you add deadly to a weapon, the 2% increase doesn't take into account the deadly increase. So there are two separate increases that don't intera interact with one another, which is uh, one thing that changed in the mobile version from the flash version of this game, which is, it's an unfortunate change, but it, it's there and then machine assisted you want this on every pair of boots no exceptions it goes on everything movement speed is a must-have in this game because it keeps you alive and it also makes you complete missions faster and then over here the pants you can also put Machine assisted on those. You always want machine assisted on those. And then on the gloves, again, always put this on here. Nimble increases your reload speed, which will increase your damage over time. Or I should say your damage per second. Damage over time is something else. Uh, this will increase your damage per second and also help you stay alive longer. For the best, you can do... Uh, you can do a lot of different things. You can do, uh, like, damage to enemies that hit you, or revive speed, which I don't recommend. But if you die a lot, you can do this. Uh, but if you don't want to die a lot, you want to stay alive longer, you can do body fueling, which increases your max HP, which is very nice. 
uh, body fueling is a good upgrade for low level gear. And uh, for the next few skill points, I'm probably going to bring this up to 6 fast reload. Or I'm probably going to actually do this first, because that's, that's a big increase to the speed. Then I'm going to bring this up to 6, this up to 5, so that's uh, 11, 11, 12, 13 skill points total. And then once I get all those skill points in there, I'm going to start going for uh, maxed out adrenaline, which is going to be really good. Alright, I'm going to pause the video again and I'll come back if anything interesting happens or if I have a strategy to help you win. Alright, I'll be back. Alright, so I, I also forgot to mention this the first time around. Uh, at the beginning of Vaccine, there is a secret room right up here that you can break through. Uh, it has a chance to have cash, a strong box, all that stuff. And then if you walk inside of this plane, there's also an item in here. And uh, be careful when you walk in this plane because a bunch of runners will spawn from up here. So keep that in mind. All right. That's it for this mission pretty much. All right, so this is the third map survivors here uh this is going to be one of the main maps that you play the most out of any other map in the game simply due to the fact that it gives you so much money when you play it this is the best way to farm cash in the game for upgrading weapons armor and just uh purchasing stuff like ammo or uh What else can you buy with, with cash besides that? Sorry, I'm, I'm having a brain fart. I know there was one more thing. Uh, whatever, it probably doesn't even matter. But it's mostly just for upgrades and buying ammo. This is the best place to do it, pretty much. Uh, the second best place would be... Uh, zombie pods just running through it as fast as you can and opening as many strong boxes as, as you can from completing that mission uh, because zombie pods is the shortest mission in the game and because every boss is guaranteed to drop a strong box you're always guaranteed to get a little bit of money from playing zombie pods even though it's really short and there's not that much in it however uh for cash purposes, this mission is still faster for cash because the survivors give you so much money when you rescue them. Uh, the main reason why you would run zombie pods instead is if instead of farming for cash, you're trying to get items instead, like uh, strong boxes. If you're trying to get upgraded gear, uh, zombie pods is usually the place to farm for it. So this mission is for cash and zombie pods is for gear. Zombie pods being the next mission after this one, uh, which is unlocked at level five. However, uh, the goal of this mission is to basically break the barricades on all the doors. Uh, the way you do that is you just stand next to the door like right up against the door like this pretend there's a door here uh, when you when you stand against the door the barricade will slowly tear itself apart and once it's open it will be one of three things one it will be survivors which is what you want and when you walk in and touch each survivor they will run out the door and run run towards the start of the mission to the rescue truck and as they leave they'll drop cash for you as you can see right here and it's it it's not chump change it's a lot of money this is the best place to farm for cash for sure um besides nightmare mode later on this is still better than early to mid game nightmare mode you only get more cash from nightmare at like level 90 to 100 100 but for early to mid game, this is the way to go. Uh, the second thing 
that could appear when you open these doors is a horde of zombies, which uh, y you'll recognize pretty quickly because you're going to end up getting swarmed. And the third thing is a bunch of items may spawn, on, well I, I say a bunch but it's just two items, uh, two items may spawn in the room. In nightmare mode it's bumped down to one item but that happens here. In this room you have a med kit and there was another item here I probably already picked it up but in regular games it's going to be a med kit and a random item. That item can be anything from a strong box to grenades, doesn't matter. Uh, the med kit is always going to be a med kit. It's always guaranteed. They can actually be two med kits in that room. I forgot about that. They can be two med kits. Um, but yeah, the, the main thing you're, you're looking for are the survivors. Uh, you don't need to rescue all of them. In fact, you don't need to rescue any of them. They can all die. It, it doesn't actually matter at all. Uh, however... You usually want to save all of them because that gets you the most money. Which is usually what you're going to be playing this mission for is the cash. And uh, this looks pretty dangerous for this level. Two wickers. The regurgitator isn't an issue. Um, the wickers though, those can do some big damage. Luckily that guy is a stripper, which is... I believe I already talked about it earlier. Pretty sure I did. Um, very, very strong weapon, especially at this level. Like, to have it this low level, very, very good. Like, he can handle anything the game throws at him at this point with that gun alone. Which is actually, uh, that's something that I'm gonna want to end up getting on this character. But that all depends on whether or not the game wants to give it to me, which it probably doesn't. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Whatever I get, I'll make do with it. How is that guy still up there? He's stuck. He can't, he can't, he can't get the strong boxes. I've, I've never seen this before. Huh. Well, I'm glad I continued recording and I caught that on video. I've never seen that before. All right then. Well, that sucks. He he didn't get the items. Uh, that's not any better than what I already have. I mean, the defense is better, but it's not worth spending more money on it to re-upgrade it. The defense value, or yeah, the defense value is too low for it to matter. Uh, this gun. I think this uh, fires five fletchlets. Oh, it's six. Okay, so uh, by the way, this damage value shown here, 71.4. That's not the total damage. It's actually 71.4 times six. So in total, it's like, uh, I think that's 420 damage, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it, it's a pretty big chunk of damage right there. But it's also 420 times 4 rounds per second. So that's uh, like 680 damage. Or, sorry, 1680 damage per second. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty decent. And then this right here would be slightly lower damage per second, like by a few hundred damage. Um, but it's more accurate. You don't have to get as close. So it maybe a pretty good option also the reload speeds faster uh, movement modifiers around the same so it's not that big of a problem pierce is exactly the same as well but I usually prefer to go with the the shotgun so I'm gonna stick with the shotgun and I have two skill points to use here because I I leveled up once off camera and I didn't want to use the skill point with that recording uh, so here I'm going to go, bam, bam, more fast reload, nothing else w worth talking about. Uh, this next, if this next mission is something worth talking about, I'll, I'll show it. Oh, also, I, uh, let me actually talk about this real quick. 
Uh, once you hit level 5, whenever you start a match, you can now buy uh, one of three things, or like mix them up, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can buy these three perks here. You can buy Tank, Killing Machine, and High Roller. Basically, what they do is Tank basically increase... Actually, I'll just I'll show this. The, the big thing here is the 20% damage immunity. What that means is you have... You, you only take 80% damage. So if an enemy hits you for 100 damage, they're going to hit you for 80 damage instead if you have this on. And then down here... Uh, the med kits, this is only really useful if you're playing uh, medic. And then uh, everything else here is kind of not even worth talking about. Except for this one here, 50% uh, health regen. This is good on a AFK build heavy, but I'm not going to talk about that at all. So not, not really that important. Uh, this is really good in last man standing if you're trying to trying to win. Uh, past level 30, these get really expensive, so I wouldn't recommend buying any of these outside of nightmare mode. However, uh, level 5 to 29, they stay the exact same price, so I always recommend buying killing machine. High roller, uh, it's pretty good. It increases the strong bot. Actually, let me let me rephrase that. It says increased strongbox drop chance, but that's a little bit true, but it's not entirely true. What it actually does is it increases the drop rates of every item, which indirectly increases strongbox drop rates. So it's technically true, but not quite. Uh, it's, it's, ha it's a half truth. Uh, but right here, this is true. Uh, so if a tier 1 strong box drops, it will be upgraded to a tier 2 strong box, which is really nice. And uh, these yellow text things here, I uh, there's, there's really no way for me to prove this. So I, I'm just going to say I, I don't think it's true. That, actually, I, I can definitely say it's not true just from experience but uh killing machine you always want to buy this from level 5 to 29 because it this this isn't the main reason why but it's really good plus 10 percent damage pretty good uh crit chance uh it's not that good if you unless you're going for a crit build um plus two hvm turrets that's the standard turret uh it's uh, you don't really use turrets frag grenades bad don't use them. This though, ooh, this is good. Yeah, uh, two Higgs turrets every time you buy it. So, to put this into perspective, you're spending two thousand dollars, right? You're spending two thousand dollars, and you get two of these turrets. Uh, if you go over here to support, here you can look at all your turrets and all of your grenades. Uh, you can't buy this, 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 or this, but you can buy this, this, and this. But to put it, to put it into perspective, you get two of these turrets, which are fifteen hundred dollars a piece, so that's three thousand dollars in total. And then down here, these are three thousand dollars a piece, so that's six thousand dollars, six thousand plus. 3000 that that's $9000 just from the turrets alone. Uh one thing I should note though is uh you buy it for 1500 but the sell price is I think that's uh 15% of the original price I think or is that 25%? No yeah that that's a quarter of the price. So if you buy these you don't sell them for the original price. Um, so why exactly is Killing Machine so good then? Basically, uh, once you hit level 30, all of those turrets get upgraded to red turrets, and 
the price of selling them goes up. So by buying as many of these as you can and getting as many of those curses as you, as you can possibly buy, you're going to end up, once you hit level 30, you're going to end up selling all of those turrets back and you're going to end up getting millions upon millions of dollars for upgrading gear. And it's really, really good. I always recommend buying Killing Machine. Like, even if you aren't, like, struggling in the damage compartment, or department, my bad, that was dumb. Even if you weren't struggling damage-wise, uh, you always want to buy this because you will get a lot of money out of it once you hit level 30. Uh, this, though, you don't really need it, but you can buy it if you want. I usually prefer not to because I like to save my money for any items that I might find. However, if you if you don't really care about it, you can go and buy it, but I'm just going to go with Killing Spree, or uh, Killing Machine. And it uh, looks like we got Survivors again. This guy's got black gear. Uh, he's He's got red gear and black gear, so if I took a look over here, you can see the gear just looks regular, normal. But if I look at his gear, his gear is green and black. Like, there's some, a lot more black on that piece of armor that he's wearing. Uh, that's that's like the tier system that I was talking about before. Um, there's standard, red, and then black. So he's wearing both red and black armor. So he's going to have a lot more defense than normal people do at this level. Um... However, he's probably trading off a lot of speed in doing that because uh, you can't really see it, but those boots probably don't have a lot of upgrade slots on them, which means he's not going to have as much speed as someone like me at his, him, at his same level, which is going to indirectly affect how much defense he really has. Like, uh, for example... If I were a little bit faster than I am right now, all of this damage could be avoided. Um, however, if I had a lot more defense, the damage w wouldn't really matter that much. But even though defense like reduces the damage you take by a lot, speed is always going to be better because you can just not get hit at all. Why even bother tanking it if you could just not get hit? It's, uh, it's really useful, and uh, I just realized he is regenerating. Ugh, that, that, that's, that's annoying. This doesn't look like a very good match. This is going to suck. I was going to stop recording, but this might be interesting, so I'm going to keep going. Oh, that's, a, that's Dark Minion and regenerating. Okay. Uh, Dark Minion can walk through walls and... Uh, it also ignores all armor, so that, that's really dangerous. Pretty much everything here is dangerous so far, so it's pretty cool. We, we might even get a really strong bo or, uh, boss at the end of this, so e eager to see what happens there. Hopefully these guys don't disconnect because I don't want to fight a tough boss by myself with this gun. That would be kind of bad. Alright, I'm go gonna grab this health kit and see what they're doing up there. Yeah, there's not too many survivors here. They're all up there. Yeah, there they are. Um, because this is such a high-level mission and I can't really do that much damage, I'm actually going to let them do most of the work while I sit back and take shots from a distance. It's a little bit boring, but it's better than dying, so. Oh, um, that guy made a mistake. Half of the survivors are going to die, that sucks. Oh no. Now we're going to get the bad ending. Dang it. 
the bad ending is not getting as much money as I should have. And now I'm going to cry. Not really. I'm just going to say that I am. But are these going to be zombies? Grenades, even worse. Also, they aren't. They aren't destroying all the registers. Ooh, there's a box. I see it on the mini-map. It's probably going to be a steel strong box, and that's the tier 1 strong box. It's going to be bad. Yo. Why are you trying to hit me, bro? Oh, it's a, it's a molly. Cool. That's uh tier three. Uh tier three strong boxes, uh they're actually not that bad. They actually have a chance to drop some pretty decent stuff. Uh most of the time they won't, but I've actually got some pretty crazy gear out of those, so you you kinda wanna pick all of those up no matter what. I've noticed for some reason uh, tier 7 strong boxes, even though they're like one tier behind the highest tier, they always seem to drop trash. Um, which is weird because they're so high up on like the strong box tier list, so I don't I don't really know why they uh, they drop so much bad stuff, but they do, I guess. Like honestly, these drop better loot than the tier 7 thulium strong boxes. Which is strange. Oh, this guy's got a stripper too. You can see it right here. This is the guy with the uh, black armor. The black boots and the red vest. You can actually see what armor they're wearing. <gasps> Dude! He's dancing! Okay, yeah. I, I would not want to fight this by myself. Uh, this is the standard version of the Necrosis boss. L uh, later on, once you hit l higher levels... Um, Upgraded versions of bosses will appear, called uh, Savage Variants. It's already almost dead. Stripper is very powerful. Steel Strong Box, very nice. Look at him go. He's he's not using the stripper anymore. I'm sad. And uh, what gun is that guy using? I don't know what gun that is. The sorry savings. I don't I don't know what gun that is. Oh that's that's the Starburst. Yeah, the Starburst sucks. I forgot that gun existed. Oh, come on. No. Oh. They could have been dead faster if you used the stripper. Hello. Hit them with that high action. Then I hit them with a good game. <gasps> Dude! This guy's awesome. Uh, that, that's probably a level up right there. Yeah, level up. Boom. Oh, I should probably also mention you can only... <coughs> Sorry. You, you can only get one level up per game. So, even if you kill, like, a million zombies... You'll still only gain one level up, even if you're, like, level 1 going up to level 2. Which is... I, I find it stupid, but that's the way it works, unfortunately. Uh... Well... Alright. Th that's a good gun. We got pants, too! That's awesome. Okay. Uh, give me, give me more reload. This is a very big upgrade for this account. Uh, well, I, I say big upgrade, it's not that big, but it's decent. Alright, so, the Raptor, we can sell this. Worthless, gone, bye. This guy, good, 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 very good, deadly, give it to me, nice. Alright, so the way this gun works is it fires three shot bursts every time it fires. And you're looking at this rate of fire and you think, okay, it fires four rounds per second. That's what that says, right? Four rounds per second. Um, uh, that's actually not true. 
it actually fires 12 rounds per second. Because uh, the three-shot burst, it fires the three-shot burst all at once, but it fires four of those bursts per second, so it's actually 12 rounds per second. Which is, it's kind of, like, misleading. I, I didn't know it meant that when I first got the weapon, so after I first got it, I kind of sold it like an idiot. But this gun is extremely powerful. Also, it weighs only two, so I can actually take this off as well. Uh, buy high damage ammo, because it's cheap. Not as cheap as this, but it's, it's relatively cheap. <laughs> but let me go ahead and demonstrate just how good this weapon is because it is quite powerful <gasps> zombie pods it's my favorite map but yeah it's it's a pretty powerful weapon it's pretty pretty good not, not gonna lie it's, it's pretty it's a it, it, it is a weapon Indeed, it could be classified as a weapon. It's, it's that powerful, I know. It's crazy. Hopefully no one leaves. Okay. Alright, here it is in action. Very cool weapon. Shoots really fast. Oh no, there's lag. But yeah, I could pretty much kill everything now. It's all dying. The only thing that might be a little bit of a challenge is uh, chitinous hide enemies, which have the uh, little gray ring around them. That means they resist physical damage. But yeah, uh, this mission here, the way you, the objective is, uh, at, the, at this point of the game, wait for the zombies to break down this door, kill them off, and then your goal is to destroy all of these purge nests by, de by shooting all of these flesh orbs or whatever they are. I don't even know what they are. Uh, there's four of them in total in the regular mode. In nightmare mode, there's going to be five, but right now there's just going to be four. Uh, right here, there's a randomized path. Uh, oh, I can already see uh, it's the right path over there. I actually, uh, I never knew you could see that far up. That That is good to know. I just learned that right now, and I have like a few hundred hours in this game. Interesting. Uh, you always want to destroy all those pods usually, unless you're speed running it, because it has a chance to drop items, but it usually doesn't. So you don't always need to, but it's good too. Oh, middle path. All right. So the most efficient route for running this map is uh, you always want to go up this middle section first because you have a 66% chance to take the successful route because it's a 1 in 3 chance for each of these. And then for over here, you want to go down here, down the right path. And from here, you'll be able to see number 1, this is closed off. And also, if you see this path is open here, you will just automatically stop going down there and go down here instead. Because there will always be a rock right here blocking your path. And there's also, what the, there's two registers here that you can break. Also, so, sorry if I'm uh if I stop talking a lot or if I cough. It's because uh I'm having a little bit of an allergy allergy problem right now. It's, it's annoying, but it is what it is. But yeah, now uh, you can go around and uh you can go around and destroy all these if you want. They have bloaters and also some runners in them, sometimes spitters. Uh, or you can just go straight to the boss egg and pop it. At a low level, I highly recommend you destroy all four first, and then go for the boss egg. 
um, which is what I did just now. Now we fight the boss. Uh, this boss has a elite modifier, so it can probably kill me in one hit. And it drops nothing. Sad. No! Add 0930. I'm not saying all that. No, my boy Ad died. My poor little boy. Sad. Hosting a funeral for him. I'm not going to, I lied. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I kind of got scared by how long his name was for a second there. I didn't know what was happening, even though I just read it. Uh, no level up that time. So, looks like we've reached the point where we aren't gonna level up every single game. Unfortunately, this is actually not a bad pistol if you're starting off, but we already have the Raptor, so it's not necessary. All right. Uh. Basically, the goal here is to reach level 15 and unlock events. Uh, there's three different events. There's Apocalypse, which is running right now. Uh, there's Apocalypse, Last Man Standing, and Virus or yeah, Virus Samples. Uh, my favorite one is definitely Virus Samples, but Apocalypse is a close second. And then Last Man Standing is like PVEVP. Like, you're competing with other people to see how long you can survive, but you can't kill each other. It's basically just survive against the zombies longer than the other people. It's a bit of a weird game mode, but it's alright. 